Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. In this week's episode, I will be discussing The Shadow Number Zero, published by Dynamite Entertainment. The Shadow Number Zero came out in comic shops this week and features The Shadow training with Harry Houdini. The issue is written by Cullen Bunn and illustrated by Colton Worley. Mark Ruida provided the colors and Rob Steen was the letterer. The issue takes place in two separate time periods. One portion is set in New York City in 1925 with Lamont Cranston being trained in the art of escape by Harry Houdini. Another portion takes place in Los Angeles in 1936 with the shadow venturing into the lair of the Society of United Magicians to save Houdini's kidnapped widow, Bess. Combining the shadow and Houdini is a great idea. Walter Gibson, the creator of the pulp shadow, was a magician himself and ghost wrote for Houdini. Houdini himself was also a credited pulp writer. He is credited for writing the story Under the Pyramids for the 50th anniversary issue of Weird Tales. In reality, Under the Pyramids was ghostwritten by H.P. Lovecraft, based on an idea by Houdini. The story is told in the first person, with Houdini being the narrator. I reviewed and discussed Under the Pyramids in an earlier Pulp Crazy episode. Be sure to check that out if you're interested in hearing more about it. I thought the Shadow Number Zero was pretty good. Although rather than being a one-shot, I feel like it could possibly be a teaser for a rebooted Shadow ongoing series. If they decide to restart the series, using this issue as a springboard, I'd be up for it. The creative team really seems to have a nice handle on the character. This was the first comic written by Cullen Bunn that I've read, and I really thought he did a good job blending the shadow and stage magic together pretty seamlessly. For the most part, all of the magic in the comic can be described as stage magic. Nobody is throwing fireballs or summoning demons or anything like that. The only real supernatural element comes in the form of Mrs. Houdini's connection with her deceased husband. Another thing I liked about the story was an Easter egg in the background of the Society of United Magicians Lair. This was in the form of a poster for Mandrake the Magician. Mandrake the Magician is a King's Feature Syndicate comic strip character who is sometimes teamed up with fellow King Features characters, Flash Gordon and the Phantom. Dynamite currently has the King Features license, as well as the Shadow license, so that was a nice little nod. I'm not sure if the other poster on the wall, or the dismembered, undead-looking forearm, that's in a case is a reference to something, but I'll include this page in the video cast for you to take a look at and see for yourself. There's also a novel by Walter Gibson titled House of Ghosts that the Shadow uses to access the society's hidden lair. House of Ghosts is the title of a Shadow story. The art on this issue was top-notch. Colton Worley has been a dynamite mainstay for a while now. He's done work on The Shadow Now and The Spider in the past. I first came across his fantastic work on Cato Origins, written by Jay Nitz. Cato Origins is, in my opinion, the best of the dynamite Green Hornet comics. I've read Matt Wagner's Green Hornet Year One, Kevin Smith's Green Hornet, Brett Matthews' Green Hornet Dark Tomorrow, and Mark Wade's Green Hornet. And in my eyes, what Worley and Nitz did on Cato Origins 
is the pinnacle of the Dynamite Green Hornet line to this day. Mark Ruida also did a bang up job on the colors. He did a great job of lighting the scenes that combine light and darkness. A colorist can make or break the art on a comic, and I think he did a great job here. The colors aren't so dark that you can't distinguish what's going on, but he isn't using a very loud color palette either. The issue is available in print at your local comic shop or on Comixology. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. If you like The Shadow and Houdini, give this a try. New Pulp publisher Airship 27 has been planning a Houdini New Pulp anthology for a while now, and it's been reported recently that Adrian Brody will be playing Houdini in an upcoming History Channel miniseries. So it looks like Houdini is re-emerging into the public conscience in a big way now. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is located at youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.